people and welcome to another episode of Sandman's Tattle Time. Today we're going to talk about this bad boy. You'll be sitting there wondering in the house there, what the hell has he been up there now? Well, a couple of years ago, me and a friend got together and we've always wondered how you can make your own seat molds. So yes, you probably guessed it, this is a homemade furnace. The hard bit in my eyes on making your own seat molds was getting the aluminium up to temperature. So obviously you had to build a homemade furnace to do that. So we've done a little bit of homework on them and a little bit, got a little bit of information on them. We'll come up with this idea. What do you need to do the job? You need a 7 kilo gas bottle. Doesn't matter if it's propane or butane. Just a 7 kilo gas bottle. A length of pipe. You can use this pipe here which is um, out of a pot bellied stove, out of an allotment greenhouse. Uh, or you use scuffy bar. Uh, anything like that, a boat, um, and that's basically all what you need to make it. How did we do it? We got the gas bottle, we knocked the valve off, obviously we made sure it was empty first. We got an angle grinder, we just cut the top off, so you end up with that. Apologise for being a bit, a little bit uh, rusty, but it's been outside for, for quite a while. So you've cut the top off, you then come round to the side and you get some burning gear, that's what we used, we used burning gear to burn a big hole. I think that's about a 60 mil hole that we burned into there. Um, we then got a length of piping, which was given to us like I say, off a friend out of an allotment. It was out for a belly pot stove. And um, the reason I wanted this is because it's got the threaded bar. So for storage purposes, after use, you could unscrew it and it would store away quite easily. At the other end of that pipe, we got, uh, 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 and it was like, a. Uh, a big thick bolt. We just welded it on the bottom of there and the whole purpose of that is just solely to stop from tipping over so it makes it a little bit more sturdy. Right so you've done that, you've cut the top off, you've um, cut your hole in the side, you've added your bar, it doesn't have to be threaded, it was just my personal preference, I, I preferred it that way for storage like this here. So you can use scuffy bar, so you've added your bar, you've added your bolt, you've got this stage. One thing I wish I had done was put a hinge on that so it could sat like that and so forth. I never really got down with it because I'm lazy. So that's that. The other thing that you'll need is a crucible. This is just a cheap Budweiser tin. Dinner take any notice of this. Do not use this. This will not do the job. Um, I have got a stainless steel one somewhere. It's just a crucible. The same size as that but made out of stainless steel. You can use anything really. Just as long as it's got a higher melting point than aluminium, that's all you need. Anyway, so, you get to that stage there, the only other thing you need is a pump off um, what you would blow up your kids um, swimming pool or paddling pool with in the summer. Um, you get them electric pumps to run off a cigarette light on your car, you need one of them. Right, I'll talk you through what we've done to melt aluminium. We've got all this soap outside, I must admit, I've done this in the winter and I couldn't go out to work. It was a, a nice, calm, warm summer's evening when I'd done this and I d it did work. Um, I've tried it with coal, it failed. I've tried it with cork, it failed. The only thing that I found that working with was charcoals from barbecues. So I went out to Asda, I paid me five or whatever it was, and I got me barbecue briquettes. I put them into the furnace and I got them set away and they were burning quite nicely, this, that, and the other. Get your crucible and put your aluminium in it and you get the whole thing and pour it into the furnace like so. Get your lid and put your lid back onto the top. Once you're at that stage, come over to this end and get your pump, what you used to blow up the swimming pool and paddle pool, what we've just been talking about. That there is going to act like bellows. You might have seen some bellows. And it's going to pump air through this and into the bottom of your furnace. It acts the same way if you remember back in the old days when you used to have a coal fire and your father used to sit there and say blaze that fire up and you'd come out with a blazer and get a big metal sheet of, of, of metal obviously and you'd pull it up I've even seen people use the newspaper to blaze it up all you're doing there is you're just drawing air through the system to make it burn uh, brighter and stuff and, and so forth same idea you're putting your pump here and you're forcing air through so you keep that going walk away from it and leave it for a good length of time. This here was glowing, 
bright red. I mean, it was absolutely piping hot. You couldn't go anywhere near it. Used welders gloves. We took the top off, as you do, and you keep on checking on your, your aluminium and so forth. And if need be, you will pack it, your briquettes around it, keeping your air on it all the time. And after a while, I can't remember exactly how, well, how long it was, but it was quite some time. It was about half an hour or something like that. Your aluminium will melt. You've then got your black sand, which you would like to pour into, or you can have formers. I've got um, an original former that was given to me by a very good friend of mine, um, and you can use that uh, to make the moulds. I'll show you that former in another Sandman's Tackle Time later on, uh, but all I wanted to talk about today was how to make your own ferns, and there it is. So many thanks for watching people, be safe, you take care out there, and I'll see you on the next instalment of Sandman's Tackle Time. Bye bye.